morning, everyone. Welcome to Weekends with Alex Witt. Here's what's happening. We have some new reaction today from here and overseas about dramatic word that President Obama and the new Iranian president, Hassan Rouhani, spoke by phone on Friday. It is the highest level contact between the countries in three decades. The president said it's a serious sign. Two of us discussed our ongoing efforts to reach an agreement over Iran's nuclear program. I reiterated to President Rouhani what I said in New York. While there were, will surely be important obstacles to moving forward, and success is by no means guaranteed, uh, I believe we can reach a comprehensive solution. Now, this phone call is a dramatic shift of tone between the two countries, and it came about after what White House aides call a productive meeting Thursday between Secretary of State John Kerry and Iran's foreign minister. Rouhani, Rouhani rather, actually broke news of that call, tweeting word of it just minutes before President Obama spoke with reporters. This is the biggest sign of respect that this country has gotten in 34 years from the United States. And President Rouhani has said that without respect, there is no relationship and there is no nuclear deal. It is essentially a formal recognition by the United States of a president of a country that the U.S. has no diplomatic relationship with. And it is much more important to the Iranians than a handshake. Now, the last time the leaders of Iran and U.S. spoke or met, Jimmy Carter was in office. He met with the Shah before that country's Islamic revolution. Joining me now, Joel Rubin, former State Department officer, now director of policy at Plowshares Fund. So, Joel, with a good morning to you. Can you put all this morning, into perspective? Alice. I mean, can the magnitude of this be overstated? Uh, it cannot. This was a historic week, uh, a real breakthrough. We're living at the hinge of history right now. And uh, this phone call this past week, the negotiations that Secretary of State Kerry and the Iranian Foreign Minister Zarif held, uh, this really does change the entire dynamic of the U.S.-Iran relationship. And uh, what we are going to see going forward now is an intensive set of diplomacy. We have meetings already scheduled for next month in Geneva about Iran's nuclear program. Uh, the the president spoke publicly about the interest of the United States in seeing a nuclear deal. Uh, president Rouhani was in New York speaking many days about this. So we are witnessing a change that uh, truly is uh, unique and historic and, and uh, very hopeful in terms of trying to avoid a war and an Iranian nuclear bomb. So Joel, why now? Why didn't this happen before? Was it because of the will of the Iranian people? Was it because of leadership? I mean, what has changed so profoundly? Uh, the significant changes have been through elections. Uh, in the United States, clearly, President Obama was reelected, and he was reelected uh, running on the idea that he could secure our interests through diplomacy. Uh, the same can be said in many ways for Rouhani. While in Iran there was a limit as to who ran for president, he was elected in June out of a field of six, and he was seen as the most moderate candidate, and he defeated his number two opponent by a score of three to one. Essentially, he got over 50% of the vote in the first round, and he ran explicitly on a platform of improving Iran's relations with the West, part of that being trying to find a way to end these sanctions. And he understood and publicly spoke about how the trade may very well be Iran's nuclear program and how to uh, assuage Western concerns to relieve that pressure. And yeah. then we've seen an acceleration since that point. So I, I want to show you a tweet from Hussan Rouhani um, shortly after the phone call. In phone conversation, President Rouhani and President Obama expressed their mutual political will to rapidly solve the nuclear issue. A couple of things here. First, we should note that over in Iran, apparently there wasn't a lot of congratulations, nor were there criticisms of these tweets as they got you know, reported there in Iran, which is interesting, not much reaction. But in terms of the future, what would have to take place to resolve the nuclear issue, and how quickly could that happen? Well, we have to be very clear-eyed about this. Iran is a country that is under United Nations penalty. The International Atomic Energy Agency has serious questions about their nuclear program. Uh, what President Obama is doing now is testing this new idea that uh, the U.S. can get a deal with Iran diplomatically. Uh, that would mean that Iran would need to not enrich uranium up to weapons grade, that it would need to open its books to the International Atomic Energy Agency and, and build confidence, verifiable 
confidence that it has no intention of building a nuclear weapon. That can be achieved at negotiations. We just saw in the past week the negotiations with Russia over eliminating Syria's chemical arsenal. Now a U.N. resolution has been passed towards that end. Uh, this is difficult. It takes patience and it takes time. Yeah. But what it does take is diplomacy. Can I ask you real quick, is a phone call as good as a face-to-face -face meeting, Joel? Uh, a phone call is a step in the right direction. Uh, clearly, there were complications in Iran about a face-to-face -face meeting. The logistics didn't work out here as well. Uh, so this is a move in the right direction. And there are face-to-face -face meetings between the secretary and the foreign minister. And that will continue to open up the space for a potential meeting between the two leaders. Joel Rubin, many thanks for weighing in. Appreciate it.